wonder is he here? Apologies for looking so rough this morning, but I'm on day three of a four day off road expedition along the old Mojave Road. The first day we crossed into the preserve from Needles and made it all the way to Fort Paiute. Then yesterday, day two, we spent crossing and exploring the beautiful Land Fair Valley. And now it's the morning of day three. It's not as windy as it's been, and it's really overcast. I think it's supposed to rain, which doesn't bode well for our Mojave road trip because if we want to go the entire length of it, we have to go all the way to Zizix and cross Soda Dry Lake, which we won't be able to do if it's soggy and has rained. So last night we camped down here at what's called Mojave Camp. It's right about mile 68 into the Mojave Road. So more or less the halfway point if you're trying to go all the way to the very end. It looks like a Toyota commercial. <laughs> so we all three of us have Toyota 4Runners. Mine on the left, my friend Jessica in the middle, and then Myron over there on the right. And then Larry, who's walking across the screen there, is traveling with me in my rig, uh, staying in a tent. Okay, I just climbed all the way up the Beale Mountains, which is this sort of rock formation that we camped in the lee of. And now I'm looking up at the most amazing friggin' view. <laughs> I mean, when I say I'm in the middle of nowhere, which I say a lot, this time <laughs> I really mean it. It's friggin' awesome! So this road here, stretching off to the distance to my right, is the Mojave Road that we're traveling. And that's the way we came in last night. And then this road here is the Mojave Road in the direction we're going to be taking it today. All the way as far as the eye can see and beyond. I'm really excited to see what friggin' surprises this road is going to hold for us today. Look at Larry over here. He's set up an office. <laughs> Larry is hard at work dedicated on his YouTube channel. I mean, he's been shooting a ton of footage, right? A ton. Yeah. A ton. And we can all look forward to seeing that on your channel, right? Yes, ma'am. What's that channel again? Eminence from X5. Check it out, guys. <laughs> all right, we left camp this morning and took a detour up this amazingly beautiful road through a Joshua tree forest. Kind of uh, out in the middle of nowhere, even by Mojave Preserve standards. But we were trying to get to a very specific location. We were kind of following these telephone poles, which are now way long out of use, to a very specific site where there used to be a phone booth. I talked about this in one of my other videos. Back in the, like, I guess late 90s, early 2000s, there used to be an actual physical phone booth way out here in the middle of the Mojave. Well, this was before it was even the Mojave Preserve. It was just the Mojave Desert. It's kind of a long story, but this guy who traveled through the area often from his home in Tucson happened to be looking at a map of the area one day and he saw that there was a phone booth marked way off of any major road, like out in the middle of nowhere. And so he became curious and on his next trip through the area, he drove out to the phone booth and wrote down the phone number. You know how like the number of the phone booth used to be written on the phone? When he got back home, he decided to call that phone booth every single day until someone finally answered. And boy, I think it went on for years. Called it every morning. He had a little post-it note on his bathroom mirror or something like that. Like, don't forget to call the phone booth today. And he had a blog at the same time. This was back in the late 90s, early 2000s. There weren't a lot of wacky websites back then. So he had a pretty good international following of, you know, what's gonna happen? Well, one morning he finally called the phone booth and this lady answered and he was so taken aback, like he didn't even know what to say at first. Like, Hello? who is this and why are you out there? Well, apparently you can see all these volcanic mountains behind me here. There's a cinder mine. I guess they use cinder to make cinder blocks or they use it to asphalt roads or to cover roads. Uh, but there's a cinder mine out there. And since this was the late nineties, there weren't a lot of cell towers or cell phones. And there was a phone booth here that the people who worked at that mine would use as their lifeline to the outside world. So that's what it was there for. So after that, the phone booth really blew up, so to speak. The, this guy and his friends would come camp out here, right by where the phone booth was, and just take phone calls day and night because now everybody was calling this phone booth. And I mean everyone, like, because he had a blog, he blogged about all this, and he had an international following. So. I guess him and his friends would camp out and just answer the phone at all hours of the day and night and random people would be calling from, you know, some depressed guy in Japan that Hello? just wanted to talk. Then next call would be some Norwegian morning radio show, like random 
people from all over the place would call this phone booth day and night. And I guess it was kind of fun to come out here and take calls. Unfortunately, when the government made this into the Mojave Preserve, I guess they determined that the phone booth was a nuisance. So they tore it out. You can see here, the line was cut. It's just hanging down there now. But it looks like people still come out here from time to time because somebody put this sign way up there. Bob or Rob Bendig was here. That's a legit sign. I mean, I leave my stickers all over the place, but this dude took it to another level. He made metal signs. <laughs> well, I thought I read online that the concrete foundation pad was still out here where the phone booth used to be, but we looked all around this area and we didn't find any concrete at all, except for this one busted up little piece here, which kind of makes it seem like maybe they jackhammered it. And that's all that's left of the old Mojave phone booth. Wow, even though there's not really anything left of the site anymore, I'm super glad we stopped here. It's a beautiful detour. But we have a lot of ground to cover today, so we better get back on the road because we got a couple of other really cool curiosities on the road ahead. All right, so the next stop or the next point of interest we wanted to stop at are these uh, lava tubes. There's a lot of volcanic activity out in this part of the Mojave Preserve. So we took this really interesting road that came up through this really red, almost Martian looking landscape. And this was an old cinder mine. Okay, we spent quite a bit of time exploring this old abandoned mine, and I didn't want this video to be 30 minutes long, so I'm gonna make a separate video all about the mine exploration. You can watch that if you want. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it to say it was an amazing place. We stopped, we took a bunch of pictures and video, and then we continued on the way. All right, we've arrived at the next destination on our itinerary, and it's these lava tubes. So there's all this volcanic activity out here, as evidenced by that cinder mine. I guess you can kind of see in the distance, these formations look like old volcanoes. Well, there's lava tubes apparently right up this trail. Follow this trail all the way up, and it comes up to these creepy friggin' entrances into the ground. I guess that's the lava tubes. You can actually go down in there. Okay, wow. Look at this, you guys. This is creepy metal ladder that goes down into the lava tube. Let's go in. <laughs> okay, so we just climbed all the way down these stairs. And now we're down here in the bottom. And there's a sort of a cave off to the right. Doesn't look like it goes back very far. And then there's a cave off to the left, which doesn't look like it goes back very far either, but I'm pretty sure this is the direction towards those two holes that we saw. What do you say, guys? Are you scared to go in this creepy old lava tube? I'm not. Holy wow, look. You guys, we are climbing through a lava tube deep under the Mojave Desert. And there's those skylights. Those are those holes we looked at from above. Holy wow. Myron's taking large format photos. He's got one of those super cool old timey cameras. That's gonna be a badass picture. Wow, look, here's another shaft of light coming through. It's so cool, wow. It's so still down here. I know this would be a lifesaver in the summertime. It's probably nice and cool down here. You're trapped out in the desert. If you could just get to this lava tube, you'd be golden. Wow, that was so interesting. What a fun detour. These lava tubes and the Mojave phone booth site and that abandoned cinder mine, none of those were actually on the Mojave road, but hey, I'm glad we took the detour because we saw a lot of interesting stuff this way. Uh-oh, it's really starting to rain now. Myron is still in the, oh, here comes Myron. Myron's coming back from the from shooting in the lava tubes. Larry and I just kind of hunkered down in the car to, Larry, what's on the menu today? Breakfast skillet. Oh yeah, Larry's a big fan of the mountain house. Larry and I have a lot in common. Neither one of us likes to cook when we're camping. So he's yeah. a fan of the mountain house. Very I, little cleanup. Very yeah, nice. exactly. I'm having some harvest snaps myself, but this rain, really isn't boating well for our Soda Lake crossing. Not good. No. It's gonna get soggy and we're not going, I don't, I don't think we're gonna go. It's too close to here. Yeah, to I don't wanna get wet. stuck, but Jessica's pretty motivated. All right, we're back on the Mojave Road 
and we came to one of the, if not the, coolest, noteworthy, quirky points along the road, and that is the world famous Mojave Mailbox. <laughs> so basically, as you're driving down the old Mojave Road and you get to around, oh, I think it's mile 73, you come across this Mojave Mailbox. And you can see where somebody actually even got a road sign, Mojave Boulevard. I guess that's from Vegas because there is a Mojave Boulevard in Vegas. And then of course there's a flag because off-roaders are real patriotic. And everybody left their stickers from all over the place. Oh, look at this one. I wonder who would have an obnoxious colorful sticker like that. Oh gee, but I'm not the only one. There are stickers from all over the world here. Overland bound, outfit and explorers. Knock around, surfy, surfy. And then check this. Up here we got, I guess this is the actual mailbox. It's really more of a ammo box with any kind of things you might need. A beer, some chlorets, a value pack. Oh look, there's some uh, protein bars and more stickers in here all over. And then I think this is a notebook in here where we're gonna sign our names before we leave. Look, to whomever needs this, Frank. Ah, thank you, Frank. Oh, look, a Coke. Ooh, I'm not gonna lie, I could use that right now. Oh, a Mike's Hard Lemonade. <laughs> wow. Okay, here's the trail register. I just made an entry here. December 5th, 2018. It's an expedition, not a competition. <laughs> that was Larry's line. Four friends and four runners. And then I signed my name and I put my YouTube channel. And now I'm gonna put it right back up here so that the others in the group can sign it, whatever they wanna put in there. And while they're doing that, there's another shrine back here that Myron tipped me off to that's supposed to be very interesting. You can see it there in the distance. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. It's a frog shrine, oh my goodness. Hundreds of frogs of every kind. Oh, I wish I would have known this was here. I would have brought a frog to add. Look at the sign. Oh my God, look at this sign. Frog parking only. Violators will be towed. <laughs> <laughs> LOL, I love a good pun, and that is a classic. Holy wow, look, this frog's got Mardi Gras beads. This frog is like a gnome frog. Man, there are all kind of frogs here. Metal frogs, plastic frogs, even a soggy old stuffed frog. Look at this one moves. Oh my God, look at this one. <laughs> Speaking of puns, welcome to my pad, <laughs> like a lily pad. <laughs> Oh no, look, it's a kid's potty training toilet. Yuck. Oh man, with a frog in it. <laughs> oh my God, it's a frog shaped toilet with a frog in it. Too funny. Okay, and then uh, the others told me there's actually another little shrine or two back here in the desert behind the frog shrine. Oh, I see something up ahead here. <laughs> oh gosh. Look at this. It's some kind of bizarre tableau somebody set up. Holy moly, what is going on here? All right, what do we have here? We have a sexy Latina Barbie, Pope Francis, Mayor Goodman, John Wayne, and the Incredible Hulk. Boy, it sounds like the setup to a joke. A sexy Latina, Pope Francis, Mayor Goodman, John Wayne, and the Incredible Hulk all walk into a bar. Well, it kind of does look like they walked into a bar because there's a bunch of army men playing beer pong here. Look at that. What is going on here, guys? Okay, my friends know me very well because they told me I was really going to like something back here. And this is right up my alley. This reminds me so much of games I used to play with my sister when we were little girls. We were really into playing Barbies. And we would play some really interesting, probably inappropriate games with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving along the trail of shrines, we saw the mailbox, we saw the frog shrine, we saw that weird tableau. There's something else I had. Look at this, a Jeep shrine. <laughs> well, they're not all Jeeps. There's uh, some Tonka trucks here too, but look at all these little toy 4x4s. How cute, look at this. <laughs> look at the M&Ms cruising. Uh, that, I mean, if that was me, I'd be the green M&M, obviously, but that's funny. Oh, wow, look at all these toy 4x4 cars, little Jeeps, army Jeeps. That monster truck crawling up the rock. Oh my God, and then all these matchbox cars. Look at that. Oh, that is so neat. 
that people knew enough to bring little cars out here. Again, I didn't know this was here. I would have brought a matchbox car and a frog and a Barbie to put with that Barbie shrine. Oh, look, a Globetrotter award. That's cool. I need to get that. Oh, it's a Toyota Land Cruiser. Like those dudes that do the overland expeditions over around the globe. That's cool. I don't see any little forerunners here, though. It's funny because that's what all three of us are driving and there's not... There's nary a Toyota 4Runner in this whole mound. Go figure. Oh my gosh, how fun was that? Okay, I think there's one more shrine up ahead. Uh, Myron was saying he thought there was a gnome shrine. Like that one frog back there had the gnome hat. Like the little Travelocity gnome. Well, guess what? I think I found it. Ha ha ha! Look at this Joshua tree. It's got a gnome infestation. Oh my goodness, gnomes of every stripe gathered around the base of the tree and even hanging out up in the tree. Oh my goodness. Okay, we have all kinds of gnomes here from this little fairy garden friendly gnome. Then we got this biker gnome. <laughs> then we have, oh, we've got a Santa gnome. Actually, technically, I don't think that's really a gnome. I think that's just Santa Claus. But his hat kind of does look like a gnome. Oh, there's one of the seven dwarfs. I couldn't tell you which one that is. Oh, look, yikes, look at that creepy skeleton gnome. There's even a far out hippie gnome. Whoa, look at his bell bottoms. Oh my goodness. Good thing he's not standing next to that biker gnome. There might be a little bit of friction. Everyone in the gnome world is here. It's like a who's who of the gnome universe. Right out here alongside the old Mojave Road. Look at that. Uh-oh. Look at this guy. That must be drunky gnome. <laughs> This is by far the quirkiest thing I've seen along this route, I think. <laughs> I mean, I knew to look forward to the mailbox and I was looking forward to that because I love finding those trail registers and signing them, but I wasn't expecting all this. Okay, so the others just informed me that the tradition is that you're supposed to leave something in this box. That's why it's crammed full of all those supplies. So I looked through all the, stuff in my car and normally i do have a lot of random stuff in my car but problem is i cleaned out my car right before this expedition but that being said i did find this really cool old matchbook this is from la mer duquesne restaurant in san francisco on uh, shannon alley off geary between taylor and jones these were given to me by this super kooky woman friend of mine hilarity jane she has this huge collection of m random matchbooks from all over the country so I figured this would be a cool place to leave it. I'm leaving a little piece of you here in the middle of the Mojave Desert hilarity for you. I mean, realistically, I should probably put them in a plastic bag to keep them dry, but I'll tuck them down in the, in the box there. Among all the other cool stuff, like, ah, oh, it's even like a Canadian dollar here. Super cool. And Larry actually left a, <laughs> look what Larry left. A pair of channel locks. That's actually valuable. I mean, a lot of this stuff is useful, not just the toilet paper and the water. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh my God, we made it. Even though there's threat of rain looming for the last 24 hours, we were able to successfully navigate at least partially across Soda Lake and we made it to the Traveler's Monument. This is a spot on the Mojave Road where I guess the tradition or the custom is every passing traveler has to leave or should leave a rock. And it looks like over the years, all these rocks have really added up. Okay, just to give you a sense of how friggin' isolated we are right here. We're on this, this is Soda Lake. It's a big dry lake. And right over here, you see that little clump of uh, trees and stuff. That's Zizek's. Done a couple of videos out there. It's an abandoned mineral springs resort. It was supposed to be a health resort back in the early 1900s. This quack doctor ran it. We're not actually hot springs. He just heated the water with gas, but he convinced a lot of people that it had health benefits and he ran a health resort out there for many years. They finally ran him off in like 1970 something. And now it's a California State University Desert Studies Center. But anyways, this lake bed, uh, Soda Lake stretches out behind it for miles and miles and miles and miles in every freaking direction. And then there's this random pile of rocks in the middle. Let's take a closer look at the rock pile. So there's some kind of flag at the very top somebody placed. And then there's a few other rocks that have names written on them. A lot of the rocks are just plain rocks, but some people did take the time to, you know, try and write something. I'm a kid. Oh, look how cute this is. 
stay sweet and love. I can get behind that sentiment. Oh, you know what? I think there's actually this brass plaque hidden in that depression inside the rock pile with an inscription on it that you're not supposed to reveal unless you come here and look at it personally. So it doesn't say online, no blabbermouth has ever revealed what it says on this plaque. And I'm really curious to read it. I'm gonna go read what it says. Unfortunately, I won't be able to share it with you. You'll have to come out here and read it for yourself. Okay, here's the plaque. <gasps> Holy cow! I wish I could tell you guys what this plaque says. This changes everything. Now I understand. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I came out here and read that. The secrets of the Mojave Road are mine. Oh, oh man, as much as I'd love to hang out and uh, talk about this rock pile for another 45 minutes, we gotta get going because you know, the weather is still kind of iffy and we still have quite a bit of Soto Lake to get across. So we're at mile 100.7 out of a oh, well, total distance of 133. So we should at least be able to get a few more miles in tonight. Hopefully we can find a cozy camp spot and then maybe finish the entirety of the Mojave Road tomorrow. But before we leave, I got to add my rock to the pile. When we started out the uh, day before yesterday, which feels like three years ago, down by Fort Mojave by the Avi Resort. We all picked up rocks just along the road on the first mile of the route. And I just wrote my name on mine. Wonder Hussey 12 2018 with a little heart. I didn't know about this rock tradition ahead of time, but I happened to have some waterproof eyeliner with me and some waterproof lipstick. So I used that to write on it. And now I'm gonna add it to the pile. How about right here? I don't need to be at the very top of the heap. Just down there among my rock friends. If you happen to be traveling this way, look for my rock and email me and let me know if it's still here. Wonderhussy at gmail.com.